Hi everyone, it's Master Wong here. A lot of you watching my video online, Facebook, YouTube and Instagram are teaching Wing Chun, Tai Chi, Self-Defense and Weapon Training. And a lot of you watching through this and you don't really know who is the real Master Wong is. On this journey here, on this episode, I will share with you my life story about me when I'm young to middle age, to teenage, middle age, so you can understand more about me. I will introduce you to who is my mentor, who affecting me when I'm young and make me who I am today. This is a life journey. On this journey here, you will learn a lot of different things in life about life so you can understand and how to apply it into your day-to-day -day life. Like my mentor always say, the way you do anything is the way you do everything. And before you learn anything, he always say, the purity of your intents, the focus of your will, the level of your awareness, and the quality of your character. If your character is good, you will shine. And that's what I believe very much sink into me till today. Sit tight, sit back, get your cup of coffee, and enjoy the show. So on this video, we want to jump back into when Master Wong was in Vietnam. So in his first story, he was sharing a little bit about how he grew up there, but was actually being bullied in that environment. So Master Wong, if you want to just share a little bit, rewind back. What was your story? Were you born with both of your parents in Vietnam? What was your uh, young years and earlier years of childhood like there? Okay, thank you uh, for you for asking me some a lot of my personal uh, question like this because it's really touched me a lot. Throughout all my life, I'm 50 years old now, and I look back, I learn and understand a lot about things affecting me when I'm young. So when I'm born in Vietnam, uh, in Vietnam, when it's the uh, American fighting in a war time, and in that time, it's very, very bad. It's so many things happened. My we family haven't got anything much to eat because it's a communist uh, uh, country, and people getting killed left, right, and center. Where we are, it's a very uh, uh, soap like not in a city, but in a very close, like a village. So a lot of things happening there that nobody uh, able to keep an eye on. So we have uh, to, when the Vietnam War going on, we, uh, the Vietnamese got kicked out every Chinese people. We are half Chinese and half Vietnam. So all the Chinese have to leave the country with the, with the boy. So girl, it's okay, but boy have to leave with the father. So my father, my mom, and uh, my, uh, in my family, we sell everything in our house, literally everything. Whatever we got left, we sell them. And we try to buy gold. My mom and dad try to buy gold. Because when you get out of the country, if you still survive, if you're lucky enough to survive, you need gold to be able to, 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 to live or to buy things because you come from a different country. So when, I, when we, my mom sell everything, we, what we got left, we just got enough money for my dad and my brother to go on a boat, okay? Because the Vietnamese, if you, tell, if you say, if you're not uh, left in certain time, they would get you, dump you in a prison. So in that time, I'm very, very young, about uh, five years old, four, five years old. And I got locked in the house because my mom don't want me to go because we haven't got enough money. So what happening is my dad go, I lock in the house, they take them to the harbor and then go to the ship. Inside the ship, it's not a ship, it's a boat. Not very big boat, like, uh, the fishing boat, not very big boat. In the boat, they have 200 people in the boat, okay? You can imagine how chaos is it. People crying, everything is a really, really nightmare. I at home, when I'm at home waiting, uh, at home, when my uh, uh, father, uh, my, my father left the, the, uh, the Vietnam and then get into the uh, sea, my mom went home, she crying, all sort of thing. And then for me, it's not very good for me because when I'm uh, that age, I got to go out to do a lot of bit, even that young, when I'm a four or five, I got to fetching water, do a lot of stuff for the house. Okay, my brother, I got another brother, so very, very young, so I need to look after. So in that time, when they come out, a lot of Vietnamese kids, they see me, half Chinese, half Vietnamese, they bully me, beat me up, smack me for every single day, like nonstop, okay? And then from there, it's a really nightmare for me, okay? Because from there, my, when I get home, my mom hit, smack me face in the soft because of I getting in trouble, because she's getting, go to work, 
when you go to work, uh, because you're half uh, Vietnamese, half Chinese, the people bully her as well because uh, that's how it is, okay, in that time. Very racist because half and half Chinese, you don't really marry the, the Chinese people if you're Vietnamese, you know. So my mom get bullied a lot. She's, uh, her husband just left in her, uh, left with two kids at home, and she tried to survive, and I go out. When they're coming out to get some stuff, kid beat me up, bullying me, and then when they get home, I get bruises. Mom don't understand what's going on. I can't really communicate too much to her. She starts to get a whip out, whip me in as well. So my childhood is not that great at all. Thank you so much for opening and sharing that. And I know a lot of people watching may not have experienced exactly that, but I think there's a lot of people out there that can relate to the bullying side. And just before we tap more into that, how did it impact you at the age of four or five to feel and to know that your dad had gone? How did that impact you? So it's uh, when at that time, I'm, I'm always asking myself this question because I live around me, a lot of people around me, they are not really uh, uh, helpful a lot. So I look at it and I said, I, in that time I said to myself, I won't able to live here like this. It's gonna be a nightmare. So the best thing to do is have to be able to survive. So I got the, very, very young age, I already become like entrepreneur, you know, like already come like willing and dealing how to buy, get some stuff at home. So I do a lot of stuff. It's not very good when I'm young, try to survive. Okay. I stole a lot of food at home, you know, like we got some, a lot of rice, certain amount of rice at home. I get some of rice at home and sell them. And I do a lot of notes like smoking, do a lot of uh, the bad stuff because I don't know, because nobody look, nobody uh, there to uh, guide me along. Then I'm meeting also the different people. So a lot of time in that time, when I'm young, I go out because it's a Chinese, a Vietnamese people, a lot of them, they're drinking a lot. They're drinking a lot of alcohol, okay? And that's uh, gamble a lot. So I, what I, uh, and then smoking. So I go into that group a lot and then fetching, uh, going buy wine for them. Because when I'm four year old, people said, man, you can't buy wine in Vietnam, it doesn't matter. You can buy any goddamn thing when that age. And then smoking, they smoke a lot, so I fetching stuff for that for them. So what I did is I try to buy stuff for them, sell to them, and then I made some money. When I made some money, and then I buy my own stuff, like secret and stuff like that on the side, and then I sell to them. So I made a little bit of money on the side, and then I bring it home uh, to buy some uh, rice and buy some stuff for my mom, okay? But the problem is when I buy some stuff at home, because I'm that young, when I come home, I said, where the hell you get the money from? Because you think I'm stolen. Then I get home, I get beat up again at home because she think I'm stowing. So with my uh, life when I'm young, the psychology behind it is a lot, a lot of hate, it, hate on people, you know, because it's like wherever I go, it's, it's have some kind of hate. So I have to be able to live and survive uh, on my own and try to make a difference when I'm very on that age. And what did survival mean to you at that age in that environment? So in survival is very, very important because when I go out, I normally arm, okay, I carry knife with me, I carry stuff with me because when you're going out, if you know when you're in a third world country, okay, you're going out, if people beat you up and kill you, it doesn't really matter. It's not an animal dead, it's nobody care, okay? So the most important thing you need to understanding the, 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 in, the, the human intelligence, it's fin and foe, who's good and who's not. That made me attracting a lot of different people that have a, the good intention on you or try to help you. I try to gear toward them a bit more and try to around them a bit more, a positive people a bit more, try to help me uh, to get where I am. So when I get into that age, I have a, a problem. I go out and then uh, we're doing a group of kids together. We go out and store a lot of uh, soap like um, bomb, making soap like handmade bomb. And then when we're doing that, when we go and doing that, we're using that this particular bomb to throw it into the sea and catching fish. Because when I'm that young, we cannot go down the go down catching fish. So what it does, we see people doing them, like uh, making a homemade bomb and throw it down the sea. And then uh, the, when they explode them up and the fish flow on, on the top, then you go and get them and then take it home to eat. So I do a lot of that uh, on that side. And one day, one friend of mine, she he's, he takes some stuff home and he mess around with it, and the the the, the uh, arm uh, he do with the like it up, but not fast enough flow. The whole arm blow it up, and he's like literally dead. And when that time happened, my mum uh, the find out, out that I got some certain thing at home, that package and stuff at home. 
she start to got them give me good hiding uh, tell me let's uh, say the uh, loads of stuff like uh because of you somebody is dying and so on and so forth so at midnight at night time i said i need to left home when i'm very young about five six years i left home and then i go out uh to to survive live in the street uh try to uh uh stay into the wherever i can find some food like beggar okay in the street close it red haven't got nothing to wear at all it's literally it's so bad and i thought to myself if we're gonna live we're gonna live if we're gonna die let's die because it's no other way for it because i can't get home if i go home she's gonna pick me up i'm gonna dead anyway so i might as well go out and see how can i survive and then i uh, certainly uh, uh haven't got enough to eat stay in the street and then fainted in a corner and somebody fetch me and uh, uh, give me some uh, yeah, so some uh, food to eat and then, then that's where I start my mentorship and my life start from there. Wow. So I think, especially on that ethic note, I know that the viewers are going to want to hear more. And if we just pause and wrap up this video for today and of course appreciate Master Wong's time, just make sure that you are back for the next episode where we will be sharing more about that journey and exactly what happened with master wong and the beginning of his mentorship and next steps thank you so much for your time no problem so any of you not want to hurt more on stuff like that come in this click on this link below here and come inside of the old a warrior entrepreneurship and you know what warrior really means then check it out and i will see you soon